Welcome back to DBL. It's been over a decade since 11 bodies were found on the coast of Long Island. Police have never been able to crack the case, but is it because corrupt cops are involved? We have a special look into the Long Island serial killer in today's True Crime Chronicles. A secret has been looming on Long Island for over a decade. How could 11 bodies turn up in the same area just a year apart. More importantly, who is behind the crime? That's what investigative journalists Alexis Linkletter and Billy Jensen are trying to crack. He's scared, he's got a lot to say. I've known Chris since middle school. It all started in May 2010 with a young sex worker, Shannon Gilbert. She was called out to a private beachside community to meet her client. About 4.54 a.m., she's somewhere in the house, apparently down on the main floor, calling 911. One of the things Shannon says is they're trying to kill me. Shannon ran out of the house, up the road, and disappeared. The fact that Shannon Gilbert was missing was a very disturbing thing to us. Police investigated and formed a massive search. And then, seven months later, police find a woman's body off of Ocean Parkway. We all assumed that uh, I don't know, it was Shannon Gilbert. But it wasn't. The remains were a different woman, Melissa Bartholomew. Three days later, three more women were uncovered along the same beach within 500 feet of each other. I've trained with the FBI. I've trained with uh, about uh, profiling and serial killer uh, investigations. And uh, I knew we had a serial killer immediately. The victims were all sex workers but none were Shannon. Another three months pass, and two more women were found. And then in April, four more victims. Without Shannon Gilbert, we would not have found his dumping ground. And finally, in December, police find Shannon's body just 200 yards from where she was last seen. That brings the death toll to 11. This should have prompted an even bigger investigation, but newly elected police chief James Burke decided to dismantle it and block the FBI from helping. He did have a questionable past, which later got leaked. A prostitute came in and was making allegations that there was a sergeant in the first precinct who was smoking crack, drinking, and had a prostitute as a girlfriend. Despite this alleged corruption within the sheriff's department, those accusations against James went unnoticed. But it's what Alexis and Billy did notice. We had no idea what we'd find when we came home to investigate the Long Island serial killer case. But the deeper we go, the more we hear about James Burke and his incredibly suspicious behavior. Could James Burke be connected to this case all along? Earlier, Tori and Al spoke with the hosts of this new Discovery Plus special and podcast. Take a look. We are joined by Alexis Linkletter and Billy Jensen, who've been investigating this case. Alexis, the man who took over and shut down this investigation is also someone who had a history of engaging with sex workers himself. Is this a coincidence or not? Talk to me. I don't think it is a coincidence. And I do think the, what our, what our project definitely demonstrates is the hubris of this police department. And you know, cause the people who put Burke in power were well aware of his history with sex workers. Mm. So it really is a head scratcher that he would be given this investigation into murdered sex workers. I mean, uh, Billy, I just have to, to come to you for this because I just, I can't believe what I read. You went to James Burke's home and he did not answer. How has he managed to stay out of the spotlight for this whole time? Well, you know, he was um, he was convicted of violating a, uh, a man's civil rights. He beat him up after this man stole a duffel bag from his car, which contained a whole bunch of just strange items, which we get into in both the podcast and the Discovery Plus special. Uh, um, but, you know, he, he did go to jail for that, but now he's he's out. He's walking around. We heard stories that he's at the grocery store, that he's at the gym. Uh, we attempted to talk to him uh, via letter, via email, via his lawyer, who kind of gave us a little bit of a veiled threat. And then we decided to knock on his door. And somebody did answer. It did sound like him, but they weren't going to open the door. 
Well, Alexis, uh, your friend uh, Christopher came to you and said he wanted to go public in the case. Is that what sparked this entire investigation? Yes, so that was about five years ago that Chris and I reconnected. We were uh, friends in middle school and high school, lost touch after graduation. And about five years ago when he was in jail is when we started talking and I offered him a platform and it took him several years to warm up to that idea because he feared retribution so much. Yeah, and, and Billy, and this isn't hard to, to imagine, but you guys had a tough time getting people to go on the record because they were scared of possible repercussions. Why do you think people are still scared to talk about this? Because, you know, the corruption in Suffolk County is longstanding and it's systemic. And Suffolk County is trying to tell us that th this was just two bad apples. This was James Burke and this was Tom Spoda. It wasn't. We're seeing that now. We're seeing that, you know, as we speak, uh, what, what's going on in Suffolk County. So it, it is, you never know where uh, friends are hiding. You never know who is going to want to protect their power and not have the truth come to, come to light because people that are in power that have gotten there for, for a way that might be a little suspect, the biggest thing, uh, their biggest enemy is the truth. That's so true. Seth Meyers always says when we're talking about apples in power, like bad apples, it's usually like a bad orchard. That yeah. leads to like a much bigger systemic issue there than just a couple of bad apples. Alexis, in your heart, do you think this case will be solved or is, and I think it feels like it's too much tainted with police corruption now. Do you have a more, a brighter outlook? I'm hopeful. And I, I agree that a lot has been muddled due to the mishandling of the case and the, you know, what appears to be a deliberate derailing of the case yeah. by James Burke. I think it's going to be really hard, but I'm hopeful. And it's, it's hard to answer because we don't know what evidence the police are working with. They have not shared that in the in the past regime, which was corrupt, and they're not sharing it now. And one of our big call to actions in this project was holding them accountable for that. You are the light in this darkness right now. You are going to pull out the corruption. I really believe it. Alexis and Billy, thank you for coming on DBL. You can watch Unraveled, the Long Island serial killer on Discovery Plus or listen to the new podcast out now. Again, you two are the light in this darkness and people are counting on you. So thank you for doing what you're doing. We'll be right back.